Well, this is the last stop, Atonic Destroyer, which means we'll possibly able to get ourselves the 7th and the final Chaos Emerald, and exponentially, we'll be able to actually get ourselves the best ending of the game, if possible, so... Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here once again, and I'm back for yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble 16-bit from certain uh, ROM hackers out there, or to be more specifically, fan-made games for specifically for this year. So as a result though, yeah, there's not much else to honestly try to explain about this. So last time, we have basically managed able to completely done with the forms of of Meta Jungle Zone by simply able to encounter Fang the Sniper again, and also we did manage to took down Wood Butternadorf, I think that's what his name anyway though, and of course that's what we actually did manage to explore for a new zone that is exclusive to this remake, and that's what appears to be by the forms of the Egg uh, Zippelin Zone, which as a result, it is very unique in that respect. And also we did manage to took down uh, Fake Knuckles from the likes of uh, Robotic Winter Zone, and so applies to Giga Thomas Pen. Apparently that's what the actual boss itself is named, by the way. And there was also the forms of the fact that we did manage to explore still my least favorite level in the game, but thankfully it's much more of improvement over the likes of the original version, in my opinion. That's what have to be body forms of Title Plan Zone. And as a result, and um... Also, we did manage to able to took down Metal Sonic again during the course of an Act 3 variation of that particular um, zone. So, either way though, because just as all though, I'm actually having a lot of fun with this game still, as I said before. But, exponentially speaking though, I will promise you guys I will give my final thoughts of the game until specifically if we decided to show you guys some extra stuff of how this, uh, this particular remake actually got for ourselves. So, yeah, today for this video is the fact that this will be the finale portion of this entire playthrough, and because of this though, much like the original version of the game, here we are onto Atonic Destroyer for the sake of the final zone in the entire game, so... Not much else different from around here, aside from the fact that, well, exponentially... Oh god, it's Thing the Sniper! But exponentially, we can able to actually just use the horizontal bar ever since in, uh, Wacky Workbench from the likes of Sonic CD. Well, the only time I've only come across into these things in Sonic CD was actually in the past version, as far as I'm usually, uh, recall that, so... But either way though, when you get the hang of it though, and also you have to avoid the bottomless pit down below, because if you fell, then you have to restart this entire sequence again, so that won't be that fun if you keep dying a lot, so... Because exponentially speaking though, there's not much right to home about, I guess, so... And it looks like we actually made it to this sequence where apparently Fang the Sniper or Nike the Weasel just somehow keep on shooting at Metal Sonic apparently. So I guess that looks a little bit strange kind of thing about it. But I'm sure we're able to actually figure this out for ourselves by simply able to actually just go from one pole to the other and then obviously going for more, uh, how should I put it, tubes. Just like in the forms of how it does it in the GameCube version of that. And what is up with this room right here? Oh, wait a second. That kind of reminds me of something. That this particular room right here, while we try to destroy those little weird robot stuff, it kind of reminds me of both Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic Chaos on uh, specifically the Game Gear alongside with the forms of, uh, well, any other versions for this matter. So... And also, we actually stumbled across the actual jet uh, shoes, so as a result though, or rocket shoes as far as I like to call it, and somehow we got ambushed by Metal Sonic himself. So of course, we do need to take him down again, but this time around though, in the entire battle arena. So because of this though, yeah, we can pretty much gonna have to take him down for reals, so we can able to exponentially try to able to stop Dr. Robotnik or Eggman, specifically for those of you really want able to call him that. So either way though, just like before, and especially noticeable that just like in the, uh, the original version of this particular boss fight on the Game Gear, uh, basically it functions in the same way, but uh, except this time we now actually have, well, um, elemental shields. Even though, mind you, I somehow accidentally lost one due to the forms of power fact that I somehow managed to able to get hit by any random occasions as far as I'm usually concerned with. So, either way though. Because, uh, yeah, at this point in time, it's the fact that we pretty much expect that we've almost nearly finished up with this game, which still, I'm very impressed with how the fact that how this particular final product of this particular game turns out. 
So, there goes Metal Sonic, and he's got, well, got weakened. So, I guess that takes care of from him. So, either way though. So, I suppose we should probably hit on to the actual goal signpost. And, chances are, we'll get 1,000 extra points. So, either way though, we can pretty much expect that we can able to continue things off at this point. So, and I think we now ended up in Act 2. So, even then though, I'm quite surprised that Act 1 kind of feels a little bit quick. So I could imagine that Act 2 might actually feel a little bit too lengthy. So either way though, because you know what I mean about the fact that certain stages are actually much longer than the forms of how it does in the original version, which I appreciate it, so... And also kind of think about it, the entire background as you probably noticed, is the fact that it's actually very similar to Metallic Madness Zone from the likes of in Sonic CD. Specifically, Act 2 variation of that particular stage as far as I'm usually concerned with. So, either way though, because, well, I just somewhat felt a bit too familiar with that particular background, so... And on top of all that stuff though, is the fact that, well, look how much lives I've gone through. Oh god, he's using the actual, like... I would say a duplicate emerald to able to teleport us into this secret room, I suppose. Oh, wait a second, we have to go for those specific sections of these levels right here. So either way though, you know what this stage reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of the forms of uh, Titanic Monarch from the likes of the forms of Sonic Mania. Except the biggest difference is this time is the fact that the sprites are heavily borrowed from Sonic 3. Because obviously you do familiar with that particular sprite, so... Now I get a strong sense of feeling that uh, if I somehow die, actually let's go ahead and switch over to Tails because not only for his elemental shield, but also I really refuse to die because otherwise, um, if I somehow die, that means I have to restart this entire process, process again. So either way though, that won't be fun if that will happen, but either way though, let's just go ahead and continue on. Oh, thank god there are some rings there, so anyways, let's activate the switch so that way we can able to- OH MY GOD! Too much, um, hazards to avoid. And also kind of think about it, this entire stage of, uh, you know, with the Atonic Destroyer, as far as I've noticed something in Act 1, it does have this very familiar mechanic that, uh, it goes like some gravity shifting, which it kind of reminds me of the forms of Crazy Gadgets from the likes of in Sonic Adventure 2, alongside with the forms of, I would say, Egg Utopia Zone, from the likes of in Sonic Advance 2, and especially noticeable with um, some occasional sections in Cybertrack in Sonic Advance 3, and maybe uh, occasional moments as well from the likes of Cosmic Angel Zone from uh, Sonic Advance 1. So, it's a nice little cool touch, I must say, especially noticeable because, well, relatively speaking, though, that was before when uh, those elements were brought back from the sake of the forms of the future Sonic games, I'm pretty sure. So, either way, though, yeah, it's a nice little callback, like I said before. So, either way, though, let's just go ahead and uh, fly straight up. And just in case we do need to dodge those a lot of beams or laser beams and whatever, want to be more precise. And uh, also, I just realized that those spiky holograms, as far as I'm aware, that uh, it kind of reminds me of the uh, those spikes from the likes of in Sonic Events 2 in uh, Techno Base level, where basically it's almost like a hologram uh, kind of technology and stuff like that, which is actually pretty swell. So, anyway, let's go ahead and grab some more rings, so just in case we don't able to die that often, so... Because usually, relatively speaking, we're now on 19 extra lives at this point, which seems quite a lot, even though despite the fact that I lost a couple due to the special stages, uh, failed attempts for certain levels as far as I'm usually concerned with. But regardless of such, though, since we actually, you know, no need to worry about doing with the special stages anymore, because, well, all the only thing that matters the most is just, well, make our way to the very end of this entire level, so not much else to discuss. Thus, this video is going to be pretty short as well, assuming if how long does this level will take. So either way though, we'll see what happens there. So even then though, and unfortunately though, I still have to put up with the forms of some input lag sometimes. But yeah, you see these little uh, gravity arrow things right here? Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Crazy Gadget Zone for or Crazy Gadget level from the likes of in so Sonic Adventure 2. So again, nice touch in theory. So either way though, because chances are though, there are quite a few references every once in a while, which I think I already said this like so many times already, but I don't think I can probably mention about that uh, for the sake of this video, because obviously we're almost nearly at the end of the game, folks. Specifically, uh, the Sonic and Tails' playthrough of the game. 
Now, if you guys are probably wondering about yourselves, about the fact that, well, after all, that today's day is, of course, the, uh, the 30th of December today, in this case, in 2022 today, only got two more days to go now, folks, until we move on to the greatest year. That's what it appears to be, hopefully, for that matter, though, anyway. 2023. So this means your marks to uh, the roadmap from the likes of the forms of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, or... To be more specifically though, Tears of the Kingdom, as far as it's hard to pronounce per se, but it's only mainly because it has been a very long while since I actually known about this news, so. And on top of all that stuff though, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, which I'm super excited for. In fact, originally though, I was ex- WHAT?! I seriously swear to god, I wasn't near to that smash compacted thing right there. Oh, that's just unfair. But anyways, unfortunately, for the sake of time, this is our first step of the playthrough, so yeah, I wasn't too surprised about that. Especially, I was seriously nowhere near uh, to the forms of that particular crushing moment, but in fact, it kind of reminds me of Sonic Advance 3 for a little bit, whenever you do decide to able to stumble across with the forms of some crushed objects here and there, which is always so inconsistent, and it's always uh, uh, obsessed with it. So because of that though, because of how the fact that I just seriously could not even believe I just got crushed. I wasn't near to that crushing death, and uh, also we got those familiar chameleon-like enemies as far as I usually saw that, even though I wasn't paying attention because, well, I just need able to focus because I really don't able to waste too many extra lives as far as you probably only know is why I'm about to be figured this out, so either way though, but still. I gotta say, I really like the music of these level right here, because as a result of that kind of stuff though, it's just, well, it's all brand new, and it's like, well, it's hard to put it, because either way though, again, it has been about a couple of hours since I actually last touched upon this, especially because, hopefully by that time until likely in New Year's Eve, then we should probably be able to expect that we can able to finish this game up, before we move on to the forms of the majority of new Let's Plays for 2023. Now, if you guys are probably wondering about yourself, about the fact that, in regards to the forms of the future Let's Plays coming up, originally though, that we were expecting to be able to do, uh, Kirby Star Allies, for the sake of the forms of in 2023 Let's Play. Sadly though, as far as I just want to point things out right away, that Let's Play has been delayed due to the forms of, maybe we can probably be able to actually do the amazing Kirby game again, but this time on a Nintendo Switch, and hopefully the visuals will be a lot more, uh, interesting as far as, Usually, as far as I'm concerned with that stuff. I know it seems a bit unnecessary, but regards to such stuff, I honestly don't mind uh, doing the exactly the same game again for Kirby's Return to Dreamland, except, well, obviously this time around though with Switch controls, and especially noticeable, just have a lot of fun with it, so. And I'm pretty sure that blue thing right here, I think this acts out as like a bridge. I'm pretty sure anyway, so. Anyway, so let's go ahead and, uh try this uh, last section of this particular part again, because after all, I seriously cannot even believe I just got screwed over by that very picky hit detection right here, from that getting crushed and stuff like that. Like, that seriously is unfair, sometimes, I must admit. But anyway, though, so let's just go ahead and, and uh, continue things on here. So either way, though, we can pretty much expect how we can able to hopefully try to make this part this time around, though, as long as I don't get crushed again, because... That's so very unfortunate, and especially noticeable that I'm not exactly sure if this was patched or not, but either way though, that it might have to able something to do with the forms of some of those. Well, I don't know about you, because again, it's been a couple of hours since I actually last played this for sure, because, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with the game, like I said, so there's not much else I can discuss, so... Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, go through here, and I could imagine about the fact that this particular level itself might be felt a bit a little bit lengthy, especially because, well, it doesn't count for my uh, uh, video's length, by the way, because obviously you're going to have to put up with the forms of my computer lag again, so because of that though, because, well, yeah, because the lag is always going to be so inconsistent on my part, but uh, I kind of wish that the actual frame rate, and especially noticeable with the game's performance, goes very smoothly. But unfortunately though, because my laptop is almost going to be entirely outdated, but that's how it usually goes as far as, you know, technical things itself has to cope with it, I'm afraid, so... Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, move along and make sure we don't rush this, because otherwise though, if we dare rush, especially noticeable if we get to that godforsaken section until coming up, 
then we could have able to actually be very patient with all that, well, you know, not to get crushed, so... Well, it's not too bad around here. Well, as far as I said, it's too soon because we now ended up on exactly the same part as I somehow died previously. So either way, though, let's just wait and go down. And there we go. And I think, don't tell me, that's actually right. It's right at the end of the actual section, isn't it? Ah, darn you sometimes. Darn you getting crushed. But anyway... But as soon as we're able to done with the rest of this, then... Oh, there's a fourth section there. So I'm guessing that uh, the checkpoints will reactivate it if you manage to be able to go back onto that specific section. So, pretty generous though, pretty generous. So anyways, looks like we now ended up on this elevator right here, which... I can assure to you we ended up on the next boss, if I'm assuming so. So it looks like that we actually stumbled across... Are these like similar models as the forms of how it does it, or those sprites for that matter? It does kind of remind me of something related to those, uh, um, hard-boiled heavy, um, robots. So, yeah, it does seem to have pretty interesting, all things considered. Like, even then, though, that... Oh, actually, gotta think about it. Heavy, boiled... Oh, it's hard to say, because it's been a very long time since I actually last played Sonic Mania. Slash, uh, Sonic Mania Plus. But anyway, I think, yep, this is the next boss fight we got to deal with around here. And this one appears to be known as Gravity Egg Robo. Apparently, that's what the boss itself is called. So basically, all you have to do is just basically have to dodge his attacks first. And then, as soon as you're able to actually go into, like, somewhat red form, as you can see, it's your chance to attack him. And then if you're trying to be able to, like, if he transforms to yellow, this means you can't attack him. So, and eventually, in the halfway point of the battle, I'm pretty sure... That uh, he will destroy the platforms, and then basically it makes the actual boss fight a bit tougher. But it's nowhere near as tough as the forms of how it does it on uh, some bosses for this matter. So, uh, there's not much else to say. So, even then though, you just you have to watch out for those uh, spike ceilings. Especially noticeable, because if you get in contact with the forms of those spike ceilings, then obviously not only do you get hit, but also you get crushed as well. So either way though. But also be careful as well. Because obviously as you know. This is the fact that the actual. Uh, the elevator thing is actually going to get a lot smaller. So this means that if you dare fall off. In this entire elevator scene. Basically you have to redo this entire boss again. So. So you still have to be able to keep up with the actual. Uh, the screen itself. So just in case you don't want to die. So. But either way, though, it knows what it is when it comes to, like, difficulty might actually progress every once in a while. Oh, no! Oh, I'm seriously not having the actual knockback syndrome again. Because, good lord, if the knockback screws me up, then I have to redo this entire boss again, including with this elevator sequence as well. But I digress. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, finish him off, assuming that he's basically done with his uh, laser shooting, so uh, not much else to say. And uh, hopefully, as soon as he does that attack, they attack him about a few more times, and especially noticeable that Tails will help me out, and he's defeated. So there we go, now we can able to actually receive that particular- oh god! Nank the Weasel just somehow took it. So I suppose we should probably stop him somehow. But uh, first off though, let's go ahead and uh, get into this top floor. And uh, basically drop dash all the way over there. And oh, there's the actual animal capsule around here. Oh, wait a second, it's a fake. Oh, that's a cool touch. It's actually a reference to something related to like... He got flamed himself ever since and during the course of being the original version of the game on the first special stage. But this is a real animal capsule we can able to break free from, so there we go. Act 2 is completed. So I think this will be the last time we're going to be seeing the animal capsule and as well as from that, that since we already saw the gold signpost in the likes of in Act 1, so, either way though, now we're on to Act 3. So in this case though, let's go ahead and deal with Dr. Eggman himself. So in this case though, he functions the same way as the forms of how it does it in the original version for sure. Like basically, it's divided into multiple phases. So for, in for instance, that the first phase is pretty simple. That basically all you have to do is just keep on attacking him like no sweat. 
And then we're on to the second phase, where basically he starts to able to shoot the flamethrowers at us. Now I believe the third and final one is going to be the most hardest phase throughout the whole entire thing, because otherwise though, that you're going to have to able to pull up with the forms of not only his fast movement, but also about the fact that you, the only way you can able to attack him is the fact that, well, you're going to have to able to do a fast reaction time. So either way though, because chances are though, it is naturally very similar to the original version for sure. And be careful of this part, because otherwise, if you don't prepare for that, then you will die, and you have to restart the first phase of the fight again. And this time around though, as you can see on screen, we now actually have a checkpoint. So there, that's actually very generous as well. Especially because, well, I can totally see why, uh... Usually some people, some uh, developers think about the fact that while well, certain fan-made uh, developers of this game might fall to themselves, uh, in the original version of this boss fight might be seems a bit tough because obviously with the lack of checkpoints in each phases of the fight, so this means you have to go all the way back to Metal Sonic boss fight and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm very glad that this was improved by able to actually add it in the checkpoints before this particular phase of the fight, so... And in fact, that kind of thing about it, 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 it also kind of reminds me of something related to uh, the final zone from the likes of in Sonic 1 a little bit. Just because you have to avoid the forms of that. Ah, uh, ah, oh, darn it. I didn't get the ring in time. Hi. Hopefully third time lucky, then hopefully we should be able to beat him as a third time's the charm, I suppose. But I still find this boss fight really darn difficult sometimes, especially because, not only because of fast reaction time, but also if your rings get scattered around and it goes off screen, then you will screwed. So as a result though, I still find this boss fight a little bit harder, so... Hi. This could take a while, folks. This could take a while, so... But I digress. But uh, exponentially though, as far as I can imagine, that this is the true definition of the, the final level. If you don't have all the Chaos Emeralds during the course of the special stages, well, thankfully we did manage to get all the Chaos Emeralds in hand. Well, exponentially we'll get the 7th one if we manage to beat Dr. Rakeman again. So exponentially, that's, uh, well, the game itself is not over yet. So, let's chase after Dr. Rakeman and he activates the actual lift for himself. And of course, just like before, we're able to take his Chaos Emerald off, off, out of his hands, and we got all seven Emeralds. So, this means we're able to actually not only rescue Knuckles, but, well, suffice, suffice to say, the day is saved once again. So I think that's where the real Knuckles, Knuckles was actually trapped in a cage, after all. And of course, just like before, that Sonic gives Knuckles a handshake, being friends forever again. So, either way though, everything else will be hunky doy every now and then, so... Oh god, Metal Sonic! So yes, uh, apparently, the game itself is not over yet. So in this case, oh god, he took the emerald for himself? Oh jeez. Well, at least thankfully we didn't lose rings, so... Anyways, here we go with the Metal Sonic boss fight again, except, well, as soon as he grabs you and does like this... Oh dang. Oh my god. Chill, man. Chill. What did Sonic ever do to you? Oh god, he got now got the uh, the negative energy for the emeralds. Oh my god, he's actually going to be transforming into something. But hey, Knuckles came here to save the day, as well as Nank the Weasel? Huh. Interesting how both Knuckles and Fang the Sniper did somehow manage to help Sonic and Tails of all things. Interesting. So it looks like Tails is about to awaken Sonic. Because, you know, the power of the seven Chaos Emeralds, you know what that means? Turn to Super Sonic! And basically we can able to experience the, uh, well, the true final boss of the game. Exclusively on the remake, by the way, because the Game Gear version doesn't count, so... I guess it's just a matter of time for the final showdown in Sonic Triple Trouble 16-bit. And this takes place in Final Trouble Zone. 
Yeah, kind of a interesting title for this particular zone. So basically, here's the forms of the final boss in Sonic Triple Trouble 16-bit. Now I think this boss is actually known as Rocket Metal, which the reason why I call it Metal Rocket, or Rocket Metal as far as I like to pronounce it, is because, well, I've got no comment. So basically, all you have to do in this particular boss fight is the fact that I think all you have to do here is the fact that you have to shoot the projectiles back at him. It kind of reminds me of the forms of that, uh, one of those boss fights from the likes of Insonic Pocket Adventure. Except, well, obviously we're going to be taking down a different foe after all. And on top of all that stuff though, much like in any other Super Sonic boss fights, that you have to watch your ring count, so just in case you don't able to reach for about zero rings, so... To be expected for the most part, especially because, well again, if you experienced the supersonic boss fights before, now I'm very happy to report that, uh, well as far as what uh, both Pinkie Pie and uh, Pac-Man have already discussed on this, ever since in, uh, you know what I mean, Mario Party Superstars Let's Play, that uh, I'm very glad that Metal, uh, Supersonic was now involved in the plot uh, elements for the sake of the forms of Sonic Frontiers, so, but I digress. Well, spoiler alert for those of you who don't able to mention more spoilers, but as I promised you guys, I'm probably not going to discuss the fun story uh, details, especially noticeable for its plot significance, so... So anyways, uh, much like the forms of how it does it in Atonic Destroyer Act 3, for the sake of the forms of Dr. Eggman boss fight, uh, I think Rocket Metal is also divided into a few phases. So in the first phase it's pretty simple, and the second phase all you have to do is just basically get able to dash straight towards him until you're able to get your chance to attack him, which I honestly found is a little bit tricky to pull off, especially noticeable because he constantly managed to able to spam in not only certain projectiles, but also certain uh, attacks as well. And I think we are surely but surely, but we're actually slowly going down towards the bottom. So either way though, which means I think he's almost down. Although I'm hoping that it will do not do a thing from the likes of the forms of in Kirby's Adventure or Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland sometimes. Now if you try to take down Nightmare Orb, basically you have to uh, kick his butts just about in the quickest way imaginable. Just in case before you die. But anyways, so it looks like if you think this is done, oh my god, he's actually upgrading himself. So in this case though, we now actually have ourselves the third phase, which appears to be, I'm not gonna lie, pretty easy, assuming if you're trying to able to be very careful of his attacks. So either way though, I highly suggest you're able to actually just to stand back a little bit, and then able to collect rings as a result, so just in case you can able to actually just to, well, keep yourself alive for this entire fight. So either way though, that, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty cool with the actual, uh, well, the sprite work as far as this is concerned. Thus, it's more accurately like an almost like a, uh, the red kind of variation of like uh, Metal Sonic Kai-like. Well, it's hard to explain because it's been about, uh, you know, two years ago since I actually last played uh, Knuckles Chaotix and, uh, oh god, he's not done yet. Okay, so it looks like we now ended up on phase four. Now, I would classify for saying this is the final phase of the fight. I'm presuming so anyway. Although, if you manage to get hit by certain projectiles, I think you lose about five rings. So it should be alright. Especially noticeable that unlike in, uh, well, as I say, in uh, any other supersonic boss fights, specifically uh, Sonic Unleashed on the Wii and PlayStation 2, uh, basically you lose about 10 rings, so in this case though, at least it's super generous when it comes to damage output, so either way though, attack its weak spot, and uh, oh god, what is this? Oh wait a minute, oh I have to mash the button as fast as possible! Good, okay just only a few more hits, ah it kind of reminds me like I was playing a Mario Party mini game, and there it goes, that's the entire final boss. Wow, I was very impressed with this, especially noticeable because, well, I just very appreciate about the fact that this was included. And I think afterwards though, well, after seeing those a lot of stars and shooting uh, comets or something like that, I believe this takes us straight to the credits, where it shows us Supersonic to somehow manage able to, like, zoom across the actual skies above and, uh, yeah, that's basically all there is to it when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble 16-bit remake made by fans alike, which I will say, 
I am very, very, very impressed with this particular fan-made game. It's actually overall, in my opinion, is one of the best uh, fan-made Sonic games ever. Next to uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Mega Mix from either the Sega Genesis or Mega CD, depending on what version you'll be playing. And, um, yeah, but again, I'll get into my final thoughts of this entire remake of Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble until when we get to tomorrow's video. In some cases though, the final day of 2022 before we move on to 2023. So as a result though, yeah, I can save that until that specific time comes. So, even though despite the fact that my game occasionally lagged a little bit, so as a result though, it might not run that horribly though, unlike in my uh, Paper Mario 3D Land on my own time, because good lord, the frame rate chugs, especially noticeable because, well, I just have no idea why, it just runs so horribly. Although don't get me wrong, the visual still looks very very good in Paper Mario 3D Land, but either way though, I think this game runs quite well, even though despite the fact that when it comes to like, uh, capture with footage and stuff like that, yeah, it probably took me some time to able to get a lot of edits to do. Especially because, well, originally though, I was expecting to able to do the second playthrough of this entire game. However though, it's probably not gonna happen for one in particular reason. That is the fact that I did manage to try, try to able to test it out for myself when it comes to likely doing the second playthrough for this game, in story mode most likely. However though, my capture footage on my laptop refused to able to actually let me continue. So because of this though, yeah, unfortunately though, this is going to be mainly focusing on Sonic and Tails' playthrough because, well, that's the main story about the game. Because as far as I'm aware, also, that uh, the second playthrough in terms of Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble on 16-bit uh, well, specifically in story mode, that uh, basically one of those playthroughs does not require you to be able to hunt for the Chaos Emeralds, which uh, you probably n want to know how that's going to be represented with, especially because, well, as far as I like I said before, that uh, we're pretty much almost done with this Let's Play, because as far as I like I said before, uh, the next video is going to be the extras video for the sake of the forms of Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble 16-bit remake, because... Oh man, there's a lot of extra stuff I can probably show you guys for this, especially because, well, still, I'm very impressed of how this game actually turns out to be, especially because, well, luckily you can able to download this game for free, so as a result though, I highly, highly recommend it, and I think the original game has been made by not only Sega, but also Aspect as well, and you. Oh, huh. how nice of you. So, with that being said though, before we uh, end off the video, I think we should probably, uh, well, end things off here, while we uh seeing the thanks for playing screen, and I think we're able to get two unlockables if we do so. So anyways, join me tomorrow for more of Let's Play of Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble 16 bit. That is the fact that we'll show off the extra stuff of how this game offers us too. So that'll be jump packed and also a lot more interesting at the same time. So as a result, yeah, I can't wait to be able to show you guys for that. So I'll see you guys until tomorrow. Later, fellas.